Research currently suggests that COVID-19 is spread primarily by respiratory droplets and aerosols. While the science with respect to the effectiveness of face masks is not definitive, the simple intervention offers protection from COVID-19, especially when combined with social distancing and hand hygiene. Widespread use of face masks by the public in concert with effective cleaning and disinfecting practices and enhanced ventilation protocols has been established in many jurisdictions as assisting in slowing the spread of this novel virus. Hello, I'm Yvonne Laurent, Training Service Representative with the Workers' Health and Safety Center. As Ontario's designated health and safety training organization, we deliver a wide range of classroom and now virtual classroom training courses to assist in protecting workers' health by making the workplace safer. We've been producing this weekly webinar series to help get information to you about how to fight this pandemic in your workplace. And we also have a three hour virtual classroom course, Hazards of COVID-19, that you might want to register for. It's only $10 and you can register online via our website, whsc.on.ca. In previous webinars, we've talked a lot about the characteristics of this virus, how it uses us to replicate and spread and effective cleaning and disinfecting procedures. Today, we will talk about the use, effectiveness, and requirements of masks and respirators to reduce or even prevent disease transmission. First, we look at the types of masks, what they're made of, and the research on the effectiveness of masks to protect others as well as the wearer. Then we will compare masks to face shields and discuss how to take care of your mask. And last, we'll review mask requirements in Ontario and how workplace mask policies can assist in stopping the spread of the virus. Video of this webinar and the presentation I'm showing you will be posted on our website later this afternoon. If you want to share, rewatch, or download, we will send you the specific links in an email tomorrow morning. There are three main types of masks. Surgical or medical masks typically fit loosely over the nose and mouth and can shield against large droplets from coughs, sneezes, splashes, or sprays. Other non-medical dis disposable masks offer protection from particulates and droplets. None of these protect the wearer from exposure to aerosols. N95 respirators are made from non-woven materials that filter out 95% of contaminants down to 0.3 micrometers in size. SARS-CoV-2 occurs most commonly in aerosols in this size range. Unlike surgical masks, N95 respirators fit close to the face the edges form a seal around the mouth and nose. Cloth face masks can be purchased or even made at home. Tightly woven cotton or non-woven fabrics are most suitable. Medical masks are typically worn by healthcare workers when dealing with patients. The intent is to protect patients from respiratory pathogens the healthcare workers might harbor. When worn by patients, they protect everyone who cares for them. Medical masks are made with non-woven fabric. This type of material provides better microbial filtration and air permeability, and is less slippery than cloth that is woven. Polyethylene at 20 or 25 grams per square meter in density is most common. Medical masks may also be made of polystyrene, polycarbonate, polyethylene, or polyester. The masks are multi-layered with a layer of textile covered on both sides with non-woven bonded fabric. They're often made with two layers that together filter out particles larger than one micrometer. The extent of filtration depends on the fiber, how it's manufactured, and web structure and the fiber cross-sectional shape. These sort of masks don't fit tightly to the face, so there is some airflow around the mask. 
Medical masks fall into one of three classifications. Uh, and this is under the American Society for Testing and Medical International Standards. A, a venous splash is a spray from a vein, and a thero splash is from an artery, which has more pressure and can be more forceful. Once medical masks are made, they are sterilized and then tested to ensure safety in various settings. There are five tests they must pass, which are bacteria filtration efficiency, particle filtration efficiency, breathing resistance, splash resistance, and flammability. There are different types of respirators. Some protect against inhalation of fumes, vapors, and gases. Others provide protection against inhalation of particulate matters, such as dust and airborne microorganisms. In this webinar, we focus on respirators that provide protection against inhalation of airborne microorganisms. Respirators must be fit tested to ensure a proper fit and seal between the body of the respirator and the worker's face, which means there's no airflow around the mask. Respirators with valves should not be used for COVID-19 as they allow the virus to escape. Since the start of the pandemic, we often hear about N95 masks, particularly the demand for them and their shortage. Respirators with at least an N95 certification are recommended to protect workers from inhaling infectious particles. But what does N95 mean? The N is the respirator rating letter class. It stands for none oil. This means the mask can be used in a work environment where no oil-based part particulates are present. The 95 means the mask is 95% effective. Masks that end in 99 have a 95% efficiency. And masks that end in 100 are 99.9% .9 efficient, which is the same as HEPA filter, HEPA filters. N95 respirators are made up of multiple layers of non-woven fabrics. They are often made from polypropylene. The two outer layers of fabrics are made using spun bounding, a technique using a nozzle to blow melted threads into layers, which build up into cloth fibers. The fibers are bounded using thermal, mechanical, or chemical techniques. The spun bounded outer layers act as a protection against the outside environment and form a barrier to particulates a wearer might exhale. Between the spun bounded layers is a pre-filtration layer. This non-woven material is needle punched to increase its cohesiveness. This layer is thicker and stiffer than the outer layer and it can be molded to the desired shape. The last layer is an electrically charged high efficiency meltdown non-woven material. This is the layer that determines the filtration efficiency. And 95 respirators filter out particles. They do this because of the structure of the non-woven material. Particles are forced to make twists and turns through the dense network of the material's fibers, which are as thin as a single micron, trapping them. Mask or statically charged material further attract particles. As particles build up, the mask becomes a more effective filter. The two outer layers protect against the outside environment and as a barrier to anyone that wear, to anything the wearer exhales. How Canada regulates medical devices in Canada? They accept NIOSH classification. They also accept equivalent respirators, respirators approved under standards used in other countries, as long as the manufacturer can provide evidence demonstrating testing to the appropriate standards. 
are the respirators of equipment standards approved for use in Canada include FFP2 and P3 from Europe, PFF2, PFF3 from Brazil, P2 and P3 from Australia, Specialist 1, Korea, N95, R95, and P95, Mexico, KN slash KP95 and 100 from China. There are several distinct differences between a medical mask and an N95 respirator. Take a look at the chart where the differences are outlined. We'll take a few minutes to do this before we continue. Okay, let's continue. A cloth face mask is another type of mask that can be used to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Cloth face masks can be homemade or purchased. They are available in different combinations of fabrics, layering, sequences, and diverse shapes. There is no single design, choice of material, layering, or shape proven to be most effective. Factors to consider with respect to cloth face masks include filtration efficiency, breathability, number and types of materials used, shape, coating, and how easy the masks are to maintain. The selection of material is an important first step because the filtration and breathability is dependent on the fabric. Canadian public health officials suggest cloth face masks should be made of at least two layers, nylon blends and 100% polyester, when folded into two layers, provide two to five times the filtration efficiency over a single layer of the same cloth. And this filtration efficiency increases two to seven times if the fabric is folded into four layers. Masks made of cotton handkerchiefs or bandanas alone should consist of at least four layers, but may not provide more than 13% filtration efficiency. The ideal combination of materials include three layers. One, an inner layer of a hydrophilic material, that's material that attracts moisture like cotton or cotton blends, which can whisk moisture away. And two, an outer layer made up of hydrophobic material, materials that repel moisture like polypropylene, polyester, or their blends. And in middle, absorbent layer of synthetic non-woven material such as polypropylene or cotton layer which can enhance filtration and retain droplets. While there are many different mask shapes, what's important is that a mask is designed to fit closely over the nose, cheeks, and chin. When the edges of the mask are not tight to the face and shifts, for example when speaking, internal and external air escape through these edges rather than being filtered by the fabric. Canadian government guidelines provide that masks are large enough to completely and comfortably cover the nose and mouth without gaping and fit securely to the head with ties or ear loops. Coating the fabric with compounds like wax may increase the barrier and render the mask fluid resistance. However, such coatings may inadvertently completely block the pores and make the mask difficult to breathe through. Some other coatings may be antimicrobial or flame retardant properties. These may be valuable, but they may degrade when washing and use. Some of the particles may then be inadvertently inhaled. The same, some cloth face mask may include a pocket for additional removable layer. That pocket can be filled with filters. However, there's a limited understanding of the extent of protection provided. Positioning and fit of the mask contribute to the extent to which the air passes through them. Finally, 
it's important that a cloth face mask maintain its shape after washing and drying. Masks that have lost their shape and have stretched should not be used. Given that access to medical and surgical masks have been limited in the past and maybe again, what are the best fabrics to look for in purchase or homemade mask? There are two factors that are important for fabric to be effective for use in face cloth masks. Factors are um, filtration efficiency and breathability. The higher the filtration efficiency, the more of a barrier provided by the fabric. Breathability is the ability to breathe through the material of the face of the mask. Recent data indicated that two non-woven spun bounded layers, the same material used for the external layers of disposable medical masks, offer adequate filtration and breathability. The table shown has been provided by the WHO of a list which includes cotton, polyester, cellulose, silk, cotton gauze, cotton handkerchief, and nylon. Polypropylene appears to be the most effective and nylon the least suitable. It is important to ensure cloth face masks are properly put on and properly removed. Wash your hands immediately before putting a mask on and immediately after taking it off. Once you put it on, ensure it fits well around your nose and mouth. Don't move the mask around to adjust it often. It's important to avoid touching the covering while using it. Cloth face mask should not be shared with others. Everyone should have at least one, if not more, mask for their own and exclusive use. The mask should be changed when they become damp or dirty. The goal in using masks in public is to decrease transmission of disease. A recent study showed that SARS-CoV-2 can travel up to several meters and be widely distributed on commonly touched objects, including furniture, computer mice or keyboards, trash cans, door hardware, etc. Plumes of droplets and aerosols are generated by sneezing and coughing. The plume contains the highest concentration of particles just after the cough or sneeze, which then dissipates in the air over time and distance. That distance is now much further than previously appreciated and can travel seven to eight meters or more. But it is not just when someone sneezes or coughs that infectious particles are emitted. They are emitted as we speak or even as we exhale. If you can detect that the person next to us had garlic bread for lunch, we are inhaling his air and with that, some of his resident microbes. A mask reduces the number of infectious viruses in exhaled air. Today, we are especially concerned about the people who harbor SARS-CoV-2, the virus responsible for COVID-19, but are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic and have no indications that they need to quarantine. Individuals who are pre-symptomatic, that is, whose symptoms will appear soon, shed the greatest concentrations of the virus. By using a mask, they can substantially reduce the airborne viral concentration around them, and this results in a decreased chance that others near them will become infected. Research has been published suggesting that exposure to lower concentrations of the virus, even when infections still occurs, may reduce the severity of the disease. The levels of the virus measured in copies of its RNA, and RNA is a genetic material the virus uses, in exhaled breath can reduce, in exhaled breath can reach 105 to 107 copies of RNA per cubic square meter of air. COVID-19 patients exhale millions of SARS-CoV-2 particles per hour. A, pre a preliminary analysis of 195 countries found that 
Places where masks were not required or recommended saw a 55% weekly increase in coronavirus deaths per capita after their first case was reported, compared to 7% in jurisdiction where mask wearing was supported or, guideli or guidelines existed. Deaths increased Deaths related to COVID-19 were reduced when masks were worn. Determining the effectiveness of masks is a complex topic and still an active field of research. It is even more complicated because the relative importance of various modes of transmission of SARS-CoV-2 is not yet fully understood. At this time, it appears personal protection is a leading motivator for mask wearing. However, it is generally thought that face masks are more effective in providing containment, which limits transmission to others. Studies of mask effectiveness specific to SARS-CoV-2 have not been done. SARS-CoV-2 is a new virus. And although, and although the world has had at least an excess of six months for its study, much of this has been focused on modeling the epidemic development, development of vaccines, and most urgently, treating seriously ill patients. Work with the virus and its aerosols to determine the extent of where protection may have to wait until we have a better, a better handle on treating the disease. Some work which looked at protection offered by surgical masks from influenza aerosols is available. It had been done in the UK in preparation for a potential influenza pan pandemic in 2008 and published in the Health and Safety Executive. The research was done with volunteer subjects and the average reduction in levels was sixfold. If the mask was assessed according to the same rules that govern the establishment of assigned protection factors for respiratory personal protective equipment, the assigned protection factor would be approximately two. In another study carried out in the UK on eight different types of surgical mask, live infectious influenza virus was extracted from the air behind all masks. This showed that influenza virus could remain infectious in aerosol droplets able to bypass or penetrate the surgical mask. Whether or not this is a, the situation with other viral pathogens depends on the infectious dose of the virus. We still do not know for sure what that is for, for SARS-CoV-2 and its concentration in secretions. COVID-19 is a serious illness that currently has no known treatment or vaccines and spreading causing deaths and strain on our healthcare system. Masks are simple cheap and their use can have substantial impact on transmission with a relatively small impact impact in social and economic life. Although N95 plus respirators block respiratory droplets, the primary method by which people pass the coronavirus to others along with, some, with, with, with some smaller airborne particles aerosols, in today's environment, they should be reserved for healthcare workers. If healthcare workers are not protected, as they deal with virus on a daily basis, they will not be able to care for the ill. Masks can protect communities by limiting the infectious droplets and aerosols around them. By wearing masks, both the wearer and the people around them are protected. This is especially true when masks are used in combination with other interventions, including physical distancing and hand washing. These are the findings from numerous existing randomized control trials focusing, uh, focusing on means to limit the spread of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. Public health authorities recommend that masks be worn. Ottawa Public Health states on its website that face shields are not equivalent to wearing a mask and should not be used as a substitute. Face shields are clear, clear plastic or plexiglass that covers the entire face. 
from the forehead down to the chin or lower. An elastic headband holds the shield in place. The shields have been shown to reduce viral exposure by 96% when worn within 18 inches of a car and by 92% at the currently recommended six feet of social distancing, according to a recent editorial in the Journal of American Medical Association. Shields offer a number of benefits over masks. They may be easier to wear for individuals with limited compliance with medical masks, such as those with mental health disorders, developmental disabilities, the deaf and hard of hearing community, and children. Because the shields extend down from the forehead, shields protect the eyes as well as the mouth and nose. Face shields also can be more comfortable for people to wear as, face, as facial heat is not retained. Shields don't impact breathing resistance and may feel less claustrophobic than masks. Shields reduce the potential for auto, for auto inoculation by preventing the wearer from touching their face. Recent work by, a, in, by an Israeli group made available on the preprint database MedRexiv showed in laboratory experiment that while medical masks lowered the number of inhaled particles by a factor of around two, the face shield performed much better and blocked 10 times more particles, and especially the finer particles, smaller than two micrometers in diameter. Person-to-person -person communication may be easier with a face shield, as people can see the whole face through the shields. Face shields do not hide nonverbal facial flus like masks might. Many people, when they are speaking to others, will take off their mask or bring it down. They do this because their voice appears muffled by the mask they wear, although doing this reduces the protection the mask may offer. With a face shield, voice appears less muffled and it is possible to see facial expressions. Lip reading is possible as well. The shields are also reusable and relatively lightweight and comfortable to wear. They do have to, have to be regularly cleaned, and this is necessary because the shields provide a good surface for the virus to attach to and remain infectious. However, the protection is not complete where the source of the infection is directly in front of the shield, the expected blocking is better than if it comes from below or from the sides because of the opening in the shields. All things considered, shields don't do the job of the mask. The major differences between them is that masks protect others while face shield do the opposite, protecting the wearer from being infected by surrounding individuals. This is why some people use both. Many masks not used in healthcare settings can be used more than once. Between uses, it is recommended to leave the mask in a paper bag for at least three days. We know the amount of a virus on an object decreases over time but it's still not known how long it would take for the mask to be completely virus-free. Storing a mask for a week would definitely decrease the viral load and the risk of getting infected. However, it cannot be said for certain that it would be 100% free and clear. Storing a used mask in a paper bag for at least three days is what's recommended. For this reason, it's suggested to have several masks that can be rotated into use. There is no set number of times a mask can be reused as it depends on the condition of the mask. A mask that is wet, soiled, dirty, damaged, or, or defective should not be reused. Most medical masks and N95 respirators are designed for single use, but in situations where supply is limited, extended use and reuse may be considered where expired stockpiles of single-use masks or respirators are, are available, 
and intact, it's preferable to use them rather than decontaminating single-use masks. If masks and N95 respirators do need to be reused, they must be adequately disinfected. Many masks can be cleaned. A cloth mask can be put directly into the washing machine. It's important to wash your hands after inserting it into the machine. The mask can be washed with other things using regular laundry detergent. The cloth face mask should be dried thoroughly afterwards. Using chemical cleaners or disinfectants and masks may expose users to other hazards. While at one time it was believed N95 respirators could be reused up to 10 times after sterilization, a new study indicates otherwise. A study published in the Journal of Hospital Infection assessed potential reuse via autoclaving of N95s in a major Canadian hospital. A dozen autoclave loads were studied, and the number of masks in each load ranged from 24 to 295. The percentage of N95s safe for reuse after sterilization ranged from nearly 49% to almost 80%. After a second round of autoclaving, the N95 respirators started failing fit testing and wouldn't be safe for healthcare workers. So this study shows that only a single round of sterilization is possible without fit testing failures, which is significantly less than what was originally thought. On May 19, Ontario entered stage one of reopening. At that time, the government recommended Ontarians use face covering when out in public and physical distances is, is, is a challenge. The chief medical officer of health said at the time, anything that covers your nose and mouth can help protect you and people around you. The Minister of Health then released recommendations with respect to face coverings. These recommendations were two, Wear a face covering to cover your nose and mouth without any gaps. Ensure your face covering is made of at least two layers of tightly woven material that can be cleaned multiple times without losing its shape. Reserve medical masks such as surgical and N95 masks for use by healthcare workers, those providing direct care, first responders, and individuals who are ill and must leave their home for essential reasons. And not use face coverings on children under the age of two, anyone who has trouble breathing, or anyone who is unable to remove it without assistance. While for the past few months, the use of face coverings has been recommended, in July, many municipalities instituted policies and bylaws making masks mandatory. Municipalities that have instituted mandatory mask wearing include Toronto, Durham, Peel, Kinston, Winter Access, Sudbury, and many others. Where mandatory mask use has been implemented, while there may be slight differences depending on the city or region, generally the mandatory mask policy applies to indoor areas only and includes the following types of masks and the following places. Convenience stores, malls and shopping plazas, enclosed areas for grocery store, bakeries and farmers market, restaurants and bars open for indoor service, indoor recreational facilities, gyms and swimming pools, libraries, community centers, churches, mosques, synagogue, temples and faith settings, art galleries, museum, aquariums, and the zoo. Common areas in, in hotels, motels, and short-term rentals. Entertainment facilities including concert venues, theaters, cinemas, casinos, and also business offices open to the public. It appears consistent that where these requirements are in place, they don't apply to restaurant patios. Most workplaces 
where it is possible to physically distance our child care centers. The health and safety of workers should be the highest priority for all employers. Employers have a duty to take every precaution reasonable to protect workers. Given the public health guidelines that recommends face coverings to slow the spread of COVID-19, employers should develop and implement a mask policy, requiring customers, clients, and visitors to wear a mask protects workers. But this guide guidance also makes sense for workplaces that aren't open to the public and where physical distancing is not possible. In these workplaces, workers should wear masks to protect other workers. The policy should be communicated to workers, customers, clients, visitors. Workers should be provided with instructions on how to wear, clean, and dispose of the mask. It is important to note that the use of face coverings should be an additional health and safety precaution. They do not guarantee against the spread of virus and therefore should not replace other important precautions that should be taken such as distancing, effective cleaning and disinfection, increased or enhanced ventilation and high hand hygiene. I hope this presentation has brought you up to date on the research about masks and how they can be used in workplaces to protect ourselves and each other. This webinar is done in a series we've developed to help keep your workplace safe throughout the pandemic. If you want to download this or any of our other COVID-19 presentations, go to the, to the website whrc.on.ca. A, a video of this and all other webinars will be posted on our YouTube channel, WHRC, WHRC Training. This PowerPoint will be posted on our website. Also on our website, you will find worker center fact sheet about enhanced ventilation and many other useful fact sheets. You'll get a follow-up email tomorrow morning giving you the exact links. In addition to this series of webinars on COVID-19, the Workers' Health and Safety Center is now offering virtual classroom training. We have modified a number of our most popular programs so they can be delivered via virtual classroom, including certification training for Joint Health and Safety Committee members. Recently, we added a course on the hazards posed by the virus that causes COVID-19. You can register for our virtual classroom training on our website or by contacting one of our training service representatives. Here's our contact information. You can also um, follow the latest developments via Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Let us know how we did today by completing the poll posted on your screen. Now let's have a look at some questions. Okay, here's the question. Um, what are KN95 respirators? Are they the same as N95 respirators? So the KN95 is also a respirator and some models have similar properties to N95 respirators. N95 respirators must meet the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health standards, whereas KN95s meet the Chinese standard. The next question says, is it okay to use KN95 respirators? Health Canada regulates medical devices in Canada. They accept the NIOSH certification. They also accept equivalent respirators provided under standards used in other countries, such as KN95 respirators and FFP2 respirators, if the manufacturer can provide evidence demonstrating testing to the appropriate standards. 
This question um, says, should I put a filter in my homemade mask? Will I be better protected? So some face masks do include a pocket that allows for additional removable layer that can be filled with a filter. There is not a lot of research on whether inserting a filter provides additional protection. However, according to a study in the Journal of Hospital Infection, it indicated vacuum cleaning filters inserted in a cloth mask reduce infection risk by 83% after 30 seconds of exposure and by 58% after 20 minutes of exposure. With that said though, it is not recommended that N95 filters be used in cloth masks as adding a medical grade filter is not an effective as, as wearing a fit test N95 mask and takes away from the supply needed for frontline workers. The next question, um, says, is it better to purchase a cloth mask from a retailer rather than someone selling homemade masks? So basically there are no standards that cloth masks currently being sold in retail store must meet. The quality of a cloth face covering depends on the material used, the number of layers and the fit, etc. This concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for participating.